Good day, junior chefs, and welcome to Cook 003 Sandwich Preparation Virtual Classroom. I am Mr. Kurt Cavino Ibardolasa, and I will be your Cook 003 Subject Instructor for this academic year 2020 to 2021. And I am so excited to meet all of you. Our first topic is about the history of sandwich. But before we proceed, let us first describe and define what a sandwich is. Well, to simply define a sandwich, it is a typical kind of food consisting of two pieces of bread with meat, cheese, or other filling between them, and usually eaten as a light meal. And again, that is a sandwich. And now, moving on with our first topic, the history of sandwich. The Outcomes of Learning At the end of the session, each of you are expected to Number 1. Know the history of sandwich Number 2. Learn the responsibilities of a sandwich artist And last, number 3. Describe what a sandwich artist is For the introduction, in this lesson you will be able to know the history of sandwich and where it came from and also describe what a sandwich artist is and identify his role and responsibilities inside a commercial kitchen. Maybe you guys are wondering who did invent the sandwich, when, where, and why. Let us watch this short video for us to know who did invent the sandwich. Enjoy! The sandwich is the most democratic of American dishes. No other nation took to the sandwich the way America did. But the sandwich actually owes its name to an 18th century British blue blood. Sir John Montague, the fourth Earl of Sandwich, was a passionate gambler. One day, as the story goes, he got hungry in the middle of a card game. He didn't want to get his cards greasy, so he asked for a piece of meat between slabs of bread. The system worked, and the story got out and even crossed the Atlantic. Here in America, we experimented with the sandwich, and by the end of the 19th century, we could offer the world a truly original sandwich. It's peanut butter, of course, and it started out as healthy nutrition for adults. In fact, it's said that a doctor invented this stuff. Not as everyone thinks, George Washington Carver. George Washington Carver did many good things, uh, and particularly with the peanut, but he didn't create peanut butter. Uh, we have good evidence that uh, a, a person, a doctor in St. Louis in 1890, uh, certainly was eating uh, peanut butter ground up. Actually, this good doctor created peanut butter as a way to feed protein to his elderly patients who had no teeth. Eventually, in the 1890s, John Kellogg, father of the cornflake, patented a way of making peanut butter and advertised it as a pasty adhesive substance. Certainly not an approach you'd think would ring up sales, but it did. As soon as you have peanut butter created, you have peanut butter sandwiches. And then the type of foods that are applied to peanut butter sandwiches multiply dramatically. So you have tomatoes and peanut butter. You have anchovies and peanut butter. You have liver and peanut butter. You have all these types of sandwiches that would sound god-awful today. Good news for sandwich eaters. Peanut butter and bacon became so popular that Oscar Mayer created a special spread with the two flavors mixed. Mmm, what a tantalizing flavor Oscar Mayer bacon gives to peanut butter. But one peanut butter combo created by some caring mother sometime before World War II took the prize. Good old peanut butter and jelly. Mom, can I have a sandwich? Then the government fed PB&J sandwiches to our soldiers. Loaded with protein, easy to store, ship and serve, Peanut butter helped the U.S. Army refute the old cliché that wars are won on meat. It stuck. Uh, and why it stuck, I can't tell you, other than the fact that as a child I loved it, and I'm sure most of the rest of us that had peanut butter and jelly sandwiches as kids loved it too. And it seems we still do. 
Americans eat an average of nearly three and a half pounds of peanut butter per person per year. That's 800 million pounds total, enough to smoothly coat the entire floor of the Grand Canyon. Well, whether it's with peanut butter or anything else, it takes a lot of work to feed sandwiches to a large family, what with all that cutting. That changed in the 1920s. And if you don't think it was a big deal, think of how often we rate something wonderful as the best thing since... Sliced bread revolutionized the sandwich world, and we owe it to an Iowa salesman named O.F. Rowetter, whose simple 1928 invention could slice a whole loaf in a few seconds. Sharp blades moving at great speed cut this bread into smooth slices. The time was right for another sandwich landmark, Wonder Bread. Come and get it, Tag! Plenty of Wonder Bread sandwiches today! The Taggart Company, which offered Wonder for the first time in the 1920s, said the name referred to the wondrous size of the bread. But this new loaf also boasted another wondrous attribute. Thanks to preservatives and a plastic wrapper, the bread would outlast your average fresh-baked loaf by several days. Authorities agree that the enrichment of bread has been a major factor in the greater vigor of our young people. And once the bread slices began humming, Wonder Bread was pre-sliced. The familiar polka-dotted package came to symbolize the American good life. Occasionally, white bread has been vilified for making the American sandwich a monotonous affair. In fact, the opposite may be true. The slicing of bread and the marketing of, of sliced bread uh, probably does encourage sandwich-like um, quick foods and any dish that comes out of uh, an ethnic cuisine or a foreign cuisine that can be turned into something sandwich-like becomes quite popular. Immigrants in cities that were only a few hours apart developed and claimed distinct specialty sandwiches. In Buffalo, home to many German immigrants, the official city sandwich is beef on weck. A slab of roast beef on a heavily salted roll with enough horseradish to make your eyes water. In Pittsburgh, the renowned local sandwich is served at Cremonti Brothers. But don't bother ordering fries and a side of slaw. In Pittsburgh, they're served right on the hand-sliced Italian bread. Back in the early 30s, Cremonti's restaurant was open from, say, midnight to 6 o'clock in the morning and all the truckers would come in and drop off the produce and they needed something to uh, eat real quick to take on the road so legend has it that the Primanti brothers put everything together on one sandwich wrapped it up and just gave it to the truckers that way so they can eat it on the road while they're traveling around and in Chicago they're known to pile spiced beef onto an Italian roll then dip the whole thing into the beef juices and eat it dripping wet American eaters are serious about variety, so if the sandwiches themselves aren't much different, no problem, we'll give them different names. Take the universally loved combination of salami and other cold cuts on a long Italian roll. That was originally called a grinder in New England because of the chewing it took to get through the crusty bread. But during the Second World War, deli owner Benedetto Capaldo in Groton, Connecticut, started shipping huge quantities of his grinder to the workers at the town's famous submarine factories along the river. The shipbuilders ordered more than 500 of them a day, so Capaldo started calling them submarine sandwiches in honor of his new clientele. In Pennsylvania, the sandwiches were named hoagies, a name believed to have been borrowed from Hog Island, another shipyard where workers ate the big Italian sandwiches. And in Louisiana, they were called Poor Boys, after a restaurant gave out free sandwiches to striking workers in 1929. And that's only the beginning. What about zeppelins, torpedoes, rockets, heroes? I'm vanished. But no matter where in America you are, no eatery is more closely linked to the sandwich than the deli. Delicatessens got their start on the East Coast in the waves of German and Jewish immigrants who came through Ellis Island. The delicatessen became a neighborhood fixture where these immigrants could find the delicacies of home, hence the name. 
delicat, the German word for delicacy, combined with essen, the word for eat. During the Great Depression, delicatessen owners literally banded together and started a campaign to convince Americans of other backgrounds to learn to eat delicatessen foods. The centerpiece of the delicatessen menu came to be sandwiches made from the cured meats, corned beef and pastrami, both common among the poor cultures of Europe. Corned beef is cured by soaking or injecting it with salt water. Then it's rubbed with garlic and cloves. It's boiled or steamed for the familiar, gentle flavor. Gonna need a side order, spring beef with that album. Its cousin pastrami, the name is Yiddish, not Italian, is smoked before it's steamed and encrusted with ground pepper and other spices. But one of the most famous deli sandwiches was invented in the 1930s. One Reuben, please, one Reuben. When deli man Arnold Reuben hit on a really distinctive combination. The original Reuben sandwich featured more than half a pound of meat dripping with sauerkraut and melted cheese. It was served on giant slices of rye bread sliced extra thin. And people were willing to pay for the gastronomic event, a whopping five dollars. And before long, the sandwich was a national phenomenon. No question about it, most of America's favorite foods can be linked in one way or another to the sandwich. What makes a hot dog a hot dog, or a hamburger a hamburger? It's the sandwich treatment. And at a time when fewer and fewer Americans take time out for lunch, the sandwich, just as portable as it was in the days of the Earl of Sandwich, is still Lord of the Lunch Hour. Now we all know who invented and discovered the sandwich, and it is John Wonder. Let us now identify the important people behind the very sumptuous sandwich, and they are the sandwich artists. Sandwich artists are usually employed by fast food restaurants specialized in serving sandwiches and are responsible for preparing and selling food items. Why does sandwich artists can be key to your customer service? Please watch the video. Subway sandwich artists are the first people customers see when they walk through the door. But there's a lot more to a great sandwich artist than making great sandwiches. It's not easy. Being a sandwich artist is not an easy job. However, there's a certain feeling you get when you're interacting with a customer and they look at that sandwich and they say, wow, thank you. This is great. And it may be surprising to learn that the career paths sandwich artists often carve out at Subway can go far beyond the average hourly wage job. I was a college student at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill in 1985. Uh, and um, my family came across some financial hardship and I had to get a job. I started in as what we now call a sandwich artist, doing a closing shift from the ground all the way up. I first started working there, gonna work there just a year, just for a little while, Christmas season, you know, get some Christmas presents. And then I started working there, waiting on customers and start meeting other people. I first started making sub sandwiches in early high school years. From then, I just tried my best working at Subway, made sandwiches the best I could, followed formula as best I could. I started in a store, actually it was the second store in the state of California, uh, working as a, uh, a crew employee in the store. And I worked there up and through high school until the time I went to college. You have to be able to multitask, that's a big thing. You have to be able to do dishes and bake bread and make the sandwiches and clean the dining room and run the register all at the same time. My store is actually located in Orlando, Florida. I'm inside the Orlando Science Center, so it's a non-traditional store. Efren Lazada started out as a sandwich artist at the age of 19, but quickly moved into management. Being a foster kid, I could have been in a different kind of situation. Um, someone gave me a chance, they took me in. Subway gave me another chance. They made me a manager at 19 years old, and I want to continue to give that back to somebody else. Part of his responsibilities involved training new sandwich artists. I tell everybody they got to remember three things and that speed, initiative, customer service. When we get a new employee in for training, we take it step by step with them. We start them out on bread, and we stay on that. If we stay a month doing that, we'll do it for a month, and we just teach them step by step. It's hard to train people. It's not always fun. You have to be a bad guy a lot of the time. 
But then, you know, you get to step in there and be like, hey, you did a really good job there. You know, you get to be the good guys. Training never stops at Subway. And sandwich artists have access to on-site as well as online training through University of Subway. We require each one of our new hires to take 16 courses online. When they come into our establishment, they have already passed 80% of the training because everything is, is shown to them via online. They take classes, then they have to take a test. So when they walk into our store, they're ready to go. Understanding the subway system is important, but what really makes a great sandwich artist? We really look for those energetic ones that present themselves with an energetic attitude. You get involved in your store, you get involved with your customers, you just get involved in the day-to-day -day things. I have some people that came in with their children, they were babies. Now they're coming in as full of grown adults. When they start coming back, they don't know anything else but Miss Sherry, the subway lady. They come by, visit. We hope that turns into positive experience for customers and motivates other employees to do well too. There are people that were sandwich artists that are now high up in the corporation. There are people that were sandwich artists that are very successful franchisees. There are people that were sandwich artists that are development agents. Actually, our very first sandwich artist happens to be the president and CEO. We can learn a lot from Subway when it comes to customer service. And while we may think the title sandwich artist is a little silly, the job description and qualifications make a lot of sense and can teach us how to hire and handle employees. Let us now move on with the sandwich artist qualifications. Do you ask yourself, am I qualified to be the next sandwich artist? Or do I have what it takes to be a great sandwich artist? Let's now proceed with the sandwich artist qualifications. A sandwich artist greets and serves guests, prepares food, maintains food safety and sanitation standards, and handles or processes light paperwork. Exceptional customer service is a major component of this position. They also interact directly with customers at a deli or restaurant in order to create a sandwich that is especially to what the guest or customer has ordered. The job description of a sandwich artist involves good interpersonal skills and the love of making a delightful presentation out of ordinary food. Here's another responsibilities of a sandwich artist. Prepare a variety of foods such as meats, vegetables, desserts, according to customer's orders or supervisor's instructions following approval procedures based on their knowledge and skills. Next, weigh or measure ingredients. Why do we need to weigh and measure ingredients? It is for us to be able to meet the standards of the recipe. Next, take and record temperature of food and food storage areas such as refrigerators and freezers to avoid food spoilages and also perform the first in, first out, or the FIFO system. Next, place food trays over food warmers for immediate service or store them in refrigerated storage cabinets to avoid cross contamination and food contamination as well. Next, make special dressings and sauces as condiments for sandwiches and also. Make use of your wide imaginations and your skills and also your creativity in doing the sauces. Next, keep records for the quantities of food used, for proper inventory of goods and monitoring of wastages. Next, cut, slice, or grind meat, poultry, and seafood to prepare for cooking. And last, package takeout foods or serve food to customers for guest satisfaction and convenience. So now, do you think you have what it takes to be the next great sandwich artist? Here's another video to show you how fun it is to make sandwiches.
So, if you do have any questions and clarifications about this topic, just send me a message at my official Facebook account, Kurt Gabilu Ibardilasa, and I will always have time to answer all your concerns. Thank you and see you again next week. Bon appétit! Happy learning at home with lessons made easy by Olivarian Go Teach. One proud Olivarian.